All right, so in this limit problem, again, if we plug in 7, notice that we get 7 plus 2, which is 9, the square root of 9 being 3, 3 minus 3, we'll get 0 on top. And again, if we plug 7 in the bottom, we certainly get 0. The thing to notice here is we have a square root, and there's two terms in the numerator. A common trick when you have radicals is to multiply by the conjugate. And again, the conjugate is basically if you have something plus or minus something, the conjugate of that is the same thing except for the sign is reversed. So in this case, the sign being a minus, I'm going to multiply top and bottom by the conjugate of the numerator. So here we go. I've got radical x plus 2 minus 3. And I'm going to multiply that by the conjugate, which is radical x plus 2 plus 3. So again, the sign in the middle is the one that has changed here. I've got my x minus 7 on the bottom. Well, if you multiply the top by something, you have to multiply the bottom by that same something as well. And now we're going to simplify the part where we multiplied by the conjugate. I'm not going to multiply the denominator out at all. It's just some extra work. So the square root of x plus 2 times the square root of x plus 2, the radicals will just cancel out and you're left with positive x plus 2. Notice on the outside we'll get a 3 times radical x plus 2, but on the inside we'll get a negative 3 radical x plus 2, and those will cancel out. That's kind of the point of using the conjugate. And then I'm left with the negative 3 times the plus 3, which is minus 9. So again, if you don't see all this, you know, on a separate piece of paper, work it out and convince yourself that you will get this in the numerator. Again, I'm not doing anything on the bottom. x minus 7. I have radical x plus 2 plus 3 still hanging out. And, okay, I'm doing some algebra. I can keep simplifying. Notice that I've got x plus 2 minus 9 in the numerator. That gives me x minus 7. And hey, this is why partly I didn't cancel out the bottom as well, or excuse me, multiply out the bottom. If I had distributed up here when I multiplied by the conjugate, it wouldn't have been quite so obvious to me that these things would have canceled out. I still have radical x plus 2 plus 3 left over. I can cancel out the x minus 7, the x minus 7. Of course, you can think about there's being a times 1 left on top. And now I'm going to plug my 7 in. I'll get 1 over the square root of 7 plus 2, or 9. I'll add on to that 3, the 3 from here. And then I'll have 1 over the square root of 9, which is 3, plus 3, which is 6. And that'll be my answer. So again, when you see radicals at the beginning of a problem, try multiplying by the conjugate. Again, if you do it to the top, you got to do it to the bottom. Just simplify out the part where there is the conjugate. Leave the other part alone because you should have something that will cancel out for you, just like the x minus 7 did in this case.